Delhi has been covered in a blanket of toxic smog for the last few days, with air pollution rising to alarming levels. The national capital's air quality index has been consistently over 400, nearly 10 times higher than the acceptable limit. Studies have shown us that inhaling polluted air can cause respiratory and heart disorders. But now, new research conducted in Delhi and in Chennai has found that breathing in such toxic air also increases the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So what did this study find and why is it so significant? To explain all this and more, I'll be joined by the study's lead author, Siddhartha Mandal, who is also a senior research scientist at the Centre for Chronic Disease Control in Delhi. This study, published in the British Medical Journal recently, has found a link between air pollution levels and type 2 diabetes in Chennai and Delhi. Researchers found that inhaling air with high amounts of the air pollutant particulate matter 2.5 or PM2.5 led to high blood sugar levels and also raised the risk of getting type 2 diabetes. This is the first study done in urban India to establish the link between PM2.5 and diabetes. So what is PM2.5? Particulate matter 2.5 are particles that are so fine they measure 2.5 micrometers in diameter or smaller. For perspective, that's about 30 times thinner than the average human hair. The sources for PM2.5 range from construction sites and unpaved roads to fields and fires. Sounds like your average city in India, right? Here's what's worrying. PM2.5 may be small, but they're extremely dangerous because they can get deep into your lungs and even into your bloodstream. Studies have shown that exposure to PM2.5 can affect your lungs and your heart. And now we have one more condition linked to PM2.5, type 2 diabetes. Studies in Western countries and more recently in China have established this link. And now we can confirm that the same link between PM2.5 and diabetes holds true in India as well. To explain why this study is so crucial, I'm joined by Siddhartha Mandal, who is the lead author of this study and is also a senior research scientist at the Center for Chronic Disease Control in Delhi. So first of all, we should uh, know this that uh, diabetes is a big problem in India. So whether it's due to air pollution or not, um, diabetes burden in India is extremely high and um, that has multiple reasons. And uh, one of the unique reasons why it is high is because of the pathophysiology of Indians or South Asians in general. So we have a low BMI, but we still have a lot of adiposity. So adiposity means uh, the content of fat in us. So even with low BMI, you could have uh, a high fat content and and that is usually related to uh, diabetic tendencies. So the burden of diabetes is already very high in India. And uh, the significance of this study is that it's showing uh, that air pollution levels are related to the incidence of diabetes. So if you already have a high burden, plus you have air pollution as well, uh, this could give rise to um, a larger burden or you could also explain part of the burden of disease due to diabetes uh, through air pollution. From January 2010 to December 2016, researchers tracked the health of over 12,600 adults in the two cities of Chennai and Delhi. They measured their blood sugar levels periodically and used satellite data and air pollution exposure models to determine the air pollution levels in the locality of each participant. Here's what they found. 1. Exposure to PM2.5 led to elevated blood sugar in just a month as well as in a six-month duration. 2. Exposure to PM2.5 for a year or more increases the risk of getting diabetes. There was a 23% increased risk of getting type 2 diabetes for every 10 micrograms increase in PM2.5 levels annually. So in terms of uh, levels, yes, so Chennai had an hour, around annual average levels of around 30 to 40 micrograms per meter cube, but uh, Delhi, it was somewhere around 100. Uh, so what we found was the effect estimates or what we call how much does the risk increase if you go uh, for a difference of 10 micrograms in air pollution or PM2.5 levels. So those effects are similar in uh, both Chennai and Delhi. Uh, 
Now, the, the differences came in who are uh, vulnerable. So, for example, uh, what we found was in Delhi, uh, people uh, in the lower age group, so let's say let's say less than 50 years of age at uh, when the study started, they had a higher risk uh, or a, a higher association with air pollution levels in Delhi. But in Chennai, what we found was that hypertensives were lower at risk. So at moderate levels, if you had hypertension, you were at a higher risk for developing diabetes than people who are not hypertensive. So I think uh, the differences are mostly population or geographic, uh, which can be due to the composition of PM2.5. So what kind of PM2.5 are in these two cities? And also what type of people uh, or what is the characteristic of the population living in these two cities? But otherwise, overall effect, uh, it was more or less similar. So around 20 to 23 percent uh, increased risk of uh, getting a new diabetes for a 10 microgram increase in uh, air pollution levels. But exposure to PM 2.5 isn't just increasing a person's risk to getting diabetes. Another study which followed the same set of participants in Delhi found that exposure to PM 2.5 led to an increase in blood pressure levels and also raised the risk of developing hypertension. What we found was that uh, short-term um, exposure to PM 2.5, so let's say seven-day exposure, so last seven days exposure or last one month exposure, that increased uh, your systolic and diastolic blood pressures. And in long term, so if you are looking at annual average exposures, so that increased the risk of uh, getting new diabetes. So again, it was incident hypertension. So people without diabetes at the beginning of the study, how do they develop um, diabetes or hypertension? It's, uh, that's incidence. So what we found was for every uh, interquartile range in Delhi was, so interquartile range is something, let's say the lowest 25% and the highest 75%. Uh, what is the difference in exposure? So that was somewhere around I think uh, 15 to 20 micrograms per meter cube, that uh, was associated with an increased risk of developing hypertension. And uh, the overall summary of that study was that if, if, for example, Delhi was supposed to reduce its air pollution levels from the current levels or the then current levels in 2016 to the national standards, it would reduce the hypertension prevalence by 15%, so 1.5. So 15% reduction in hypertension prevalence if you control a population level uh, risk factor. These two studies are worrying because India already has a high burden of non-communicable diseases such as hypertension or diabetes for example. But until now, diabetes has largely been considered a lifestyle related condition. The onus has been on the individual to change their lifestyle. Most diseases have components which are attributable to different things. So, for example, environmental uh, attribution or uh, genetics, uh, hereditary uh, traits. So, for example, so let's say diabetes, if a part of it is due to your diet and physical activity, a part of it could be due to genetics, but there is also a significant part which is now due to the environment. So, uh, so while, I mean, the onus is not only on an individual now. So, if we control air pollution, for example, or ambient air pollution, uh, you are controlling uh, multiple different uh, risk factors for future heart disease. So, for example, diabetes is one risk factor for future uh, heart disease and also other things like chronic kidney disease and so on. But you are also getting to control, let's say, hypertension. So, you are controlling multiple risk factors by controlling this one environmental factor, which is ambient air pollution. The first thing it's not only for the government, but also for the general public to realize that air pollution is not a, a short term problem or a localized problem. So air pollution, so if you look at the example of Chennai, it's 30 to 40 micrograms per meter cube. So that's not, that's nothing close to what Delhi is experiencing now, but it's still a problem. So the first thing to realize is air pollution as a long term problem. So you need to treat it as a long term problem and not not as a 15-day problem or a one-month problem. Uh, next is it's affecting a large population and it's it's everywhere. So uh, whether it's tier two cities or tier one cities or even within uh, Delhi, it's a large population that is exposed to air pollution. So the interventions also have to be at that level. So you cannot do like short interventions 
so it has to be done keeping in mind what is going to come in the next year so for example if you start planning now you cannot reduce air pollution in 5 days or 10 days so you need to think about what is going to happen in 5 years for example so if, if the, the target should be in that uh, temporal range so you should think of reducing air pollution uh, over a longer period of time so the interventions also have to be at that scale so it is not like it's just because you cannot see the haze doesn't mean the air pollution is not there most of the particles that we are talking about here which cause uh, extreme health effects they are not visible to the naked eye but it's still there so i think uh, the intervention should be broad holistic um, interventions and keeping in mind that you need to reduce the annual average or the five year average air pollution so what happens down the line i, mean, I still want to uh, emphasize on the fact that air pollution is not a delhi problem or a mumbai problem it's a problem in several parts of the country where uh, we are not focusing on so the media attention is mostly on delhi and most of the metro cities there are several tier two cities with a high population density and also high air pollution exposures so we should keep in mind uh, that those places the people in those places are also getting affected and the second thing is it's not only respiratory problems or eye related issues and it's not a short term problem so it's affecting health over a longer period of time so the focus needs to be on uh, chronic diseases which uh, is going to increase your disease burden much larger in in a much much more significant way in the coming years Although this study was limited to Chennai and Delhi, its conclusions are significant for most of India's cities. After all, a 2022 report found that 39 of the world's most polluted cities are in India. This study establishing a scientific link between air pollution levels and type 2 diabetes should be a wake-up call for all of us, but especially the government, to ensure that we don't continue to inhale toxic air in the future. News laundry the news minute news laundry the news minute news laundry and the news minute are coming together saath aa rahe hain five states two independent media organizations and one team so log on to newslaundry.com contribute to the news minute and news laundry election fund joint election fund tnm nl joint election fund to hamara sahyog kare contribute now because we are stronger together kyunki saath saath milkar hi हम सब मजबूत होंगे क्योंकि सागे आपा मजबूत रहसा कलिसी उनते ने बलंगा उनता वे स्ट्रांगर टुगेदर एंड वे आर इवन स्ट्रांगर विद यू